It's the professional MasterChef quarterfinal. These six talented chefs stood out in their heats. Now, they will face two more challenges to test them even further. I found the competition so far one of the toughest experiences in my life. It's a lot harder than you actually think. To be a court finalist, it's a pretty epic feeling. I didn't think it would mean as much as it does, but being here, it just spurred me on to go even further. First, they will have to face an invention test. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Those that get through will then face the country's most discerning food critics. This dish is utter perfection. Only the best will earn a place in knockout week. Six chefs and boy, have we got a great test in store for them. I want to see these chefs push themselves to the limit. Chefs, welcome back. This is an invention test. Four of you are going to be going through, and two of you are going to be going home. You're going to have to think on your feet. You're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to focus. Please uncover your ingredients. In front of you, you have some whole almonds, calvados, star anise. You have cinnamon, a vanilla pod, chocolate, apples, some strawberries, mascarpone, and a bunch of basil. Okay, chefs, 10 minutes to plan. Off you go. This is really quite difficult when you don't have recipes in front of you. It's quite a science, so it's just gonna be about sticking to what I know and getting it right. All our six chefs here made savory signature dishes. This is why we've put together a pastry invention test. Pastry section is a third of a menu. Why miss out one third of your training? We have told them, if you have a weakness, we will find it. I wouldn't say that I'm like a pastry chef by trade, otherwise I'd be a pastry chef, not a private chef, but um, comfortable enough. I'm very happy with what I got in front of me, but right now my mind is a bit abuzz of what to do. Chefs, your 10 minutes is up. You now have one hour and 30 minutes to make your desserts. Good luck. Josh, our 26-year-old head chef from Shropshire. What a signature dish. Wow, bit of controversy with that dish. You can just take the honeycomb out of the equation. Absolutely sensational. He's got a great attitude. He came in there fighting. I hope he's ready to fight for today. As a chef, I would say I'm quite creative. I like to push boundaries. I like to almost trick the customer into what they're having. I like to play with their minds, play with their taste buds, and hopefully they like it, really. Josh. How does it feel to be in here? Oh, it feels amazing. You know, uh, after the previous performance, I want to just push on and show you that I'm worthy of being here. Does it scare you to, to do a pastry challenge? It doesn't then? scare me. I've worked on pastry sections before. So it's easier said than done, you know. So I'm doing a cheesecake with strawberries, basil, cracked back pepper, toasted almonds as well, because I think it's a good combination. Hopefully a few bits and bobs that will hopefully surprise you. I just want to keep being me and believing in what I do. Any honeycomb in your dessert today? No honeycomb, because you told me to refrain today, so... I would have liked honeycomb. Actually, <laughs> today's the day I actually would like your yeah, honeycomb. Yeah, uh, maybe a surprise of honeycomb later. Oh, I, yeah. do know. Oh, I was right. looking forward to that. <laughs> OK, thank you. Crack on. Josh is so gung-ho at the moment. I love it that he really wants to push himself. Josh is making a vanilla cheesecake. Very interesting to see what crust he puts underneath. There are no biscuits. He's going to have to make some form of a crumb. One thing I do know is that if Josh can deliver a dish that comes close to his signature dish, we are going to be in for a cracking dessert. Angela, our 32-year-old private chef in London. She split us up a little bit in the judging for the signature dish. But overall, I thought she cooked very well. She definitely showed promise, and I think she deserves to be here. 
I wouldn't say that I'm a massively, massively competitive person, but I think some other people might disagree with me. Everyone likes to win, don't they? It's a nice feeling. No one likes to lose. How do you feel about pastry today? I'm really pleased, actually, I think, of the things that could have happened today. It's not the worst. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to do is a little pat sucre base with some apple panna cotta, apple and vanilla puree, a burnt apple and cinnamon puree, and some Italian meringue. Is this something you've done before? Oh, the, the things that the things separately I've done before, but not the tart itself. OK. Well, we wish you luck. Thank you so much. Angela is making us a biscuit from sweet pastry, panna cotta, a mousse, hopefully some meringue, some apples. It sounds like a lot of other desserts all coming together as one dessert. And that just rings a few little alarm bells with me. Chefs, you've had 30 minutes already. You have just one hour left. Danilo, a 29-year-old chef from the Italian embassy. I like his calmness, I like his control. I hope Danilo can deliver something as lovely and as delicate and as skillful as he did in his signature dish. I can't say that I am the most creative and inventive. I think it's good to stick to your guns, do what you know. There is time to try new things and there is time which you don't want to do that. Danilo. Hi. How are you? Not bad, can't complain. I'm doing a torta caprese, which is an Italian cake without uh, any flour at all. Some vanilla panna cotta and strawberry puree with basil. It sounds divine, sounds wonderful. Hope it tastes good as it sounds. A panna cotta from an Italian chef, it's got to be right. Yes. Ooh, what, ooh yeah. you don't sound so sure. No, I mean, you just have to scare me. No, don't. <laughs> Ignore me. He scares everybody. <laughs> it's natural. Don't worry about it. You're not the first. We'll let you get on. Thanks Danilo. a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Danilo. Torta Caprice. That's a new one on me. I don't normally speak Italian. I love the sound of this stuff. It's got chocolate in it. Strawberries, basil and a vanilla panna cotta. And I hope that the Calvados is in there somewhere. Jason is a 34-year-old freelance chef here in London. Signature dish, wow. All three of us agreed that he really did put Caribbean food on the map. Me, I'm the kind of chef that just does things on the whims. I break the rules, I mix ingredients, even if they don't go until I get them to fuse together perfectly. And I think that that is a true chef, someone that can mix the impossible. Jason. Yes, yeah, chef. What's happened to all the Calvados? Yeah, I, I like to cook with spirits and it, this is one of my favourite alcohols I like to cook with also. So what I've done is reduced it with the strawberries that is going to be in a gel. I'm going to set my chocolate mousse on top of that. I think I'm going to get something out quite good. Are you getting a bit confident now with, with what you're making? Creativity test is something that I love to do. You know, I just think it's up to me to put the flavours on the plate and it should all come together in the end. So I think that I'm, I got a good chance. Good man. Calvado, strawberries. I'm curious how that will go with the balance of the chocolate in his dessert. I'm wondering if it's going to be overpowering for the amount of strawberries he's got. If it works, it'll be wonderful. Chefs, you've had 45 minutes. You're now halfway. Darren is our 34-year-old development chef from Scotland. And I'm sure you remember that langoustine dish that he made with the stunning bisque. It was delightful and all three of us raved about it. As a development chef, I have to be very creative. I've got to keep constantly coming up with things that people haven't seen before. Uh, otherwise, there's no point in me being there. Darren, have I missed something here? Because there doesn't seem to be anything on your bench. Have you served up and cleaned up? Uh, no, I'm, most of my preps in the fridge, semi-done. I'm just waiting, hoping and praying with my fingers crossed that everything works. What's the title of the dish? Apple semifredo with caramel chocolate mousse, roasted apples and an apple puree. What's the inspiration? Just the beautiful flavours that were in front of us today. So we had some really nice apples. That, that caramel chocolate is just screaming out to be made into a nice mousse. Touch of cinnamon, touch of star anise. It's just flavours that I love, really. Okay. I believe dessert is one of my strengths, but 
I also believe that dessert is a science and I find it really difficult mm. not to have a recipe in front of me. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Darren says he's not comfortable to work without a recipe, but he looks confident. Interesting combinations. I think the key to the semi-freddo is the freezing of it. You don't want it rock hard. You want it to be at the right consistency. Liam is a 26-year-old sous chef at a Michelin-starred restaurant in London. His skills test was fantastic. His signature dish, he showed some great skills, and I think he deserves to be here. If I had to say I had a weakness, it would be pastry, but it wouldn't be a weakness that I'd shy away from. You know, give me a challenge and I'll take it on. Liam, pastry, stressing you out, relaxing you, how are you uh, feeling? I wouldn't this? say it's relaxing me, but it's not my strength. But right. Giving it my best, really. See okay. what happens. What are you going to make for us? I'm making a roast apple with a Calvados cream, a toffee sauce, and a roasted macadamia nuts with a little bit of lemon zest in there. Are you using any strawberries, any basil, any lemon, and are you making any pastry at all? Uh, I'm not making actually any pastry. I've left the uh, strawberry and the basils out because obviously when I looked at the dish, there was kind of two different ways it was going to go. Is okay. it going to go sort of apple or roasted? Sort so of. the focus is all on the apple? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Liam, is this a dessert you've done before? Like I said, I haven't done much pastry, so it is an invention test, so I am kind of inventing it right now. Liam's going to be serving the apples with toffee and chocolate sauce and also serving it with a Calvados cream. And that's pretty much it. There's no strawberries in there, there's no pastry making, there's no panna cotta. There's so many things he could be making for this dessert. This seriously is a case of winging it. At the moment, I'm a bit worried for Liam. Chefs, you've got 15 minutes left. This is when our chef should be checking that things that are set really are set, sauces are done, everything has got to be ready to be plated. Chefs, you have only eight minutes left. Chefs, time's up. Stop cooking. Good come in, chef. Well done. Thanks. First up is 34-year-old development chef Darren. He's made an apple semi-fredo with a caramel chocolate mascarpone, roasted apples, apple puree, and a vanilla crumb with a Calvados syrup on the side. The dish looks really appealing. I mean, it really does. If I have to critique, I would just say that the chocolate cream looks very thick and it's splitting on the side. But on presentation, I think you've done a great job here, Darren. Thank you. Presentation looks good, Darren. Very good. Nice and crisp, nice and clean, and the syrup absolutely just delivers the dish beautifully well. I think the texture of the semi ferro is just right. It's not too frozen, and it's very creamy. It's how it should be. The chocolate caramel cream is delightful against that apple and with the syrup, again, mm. it comes together. What I like about this dish, Darren, is you've got so many little things going on and lots of different skills. And I think what I can see here is that you've really pushed yourself and delivered a very, very good dish. Thank you very much. Very good, very, very good. Well Thank done. you both. Thank you. That was amazing. I'm so pleased, so pleased. I'm over the moon with the judges' reactions to my dessert. Uh, Marcus said, make sure you're not a one-dish wonder, so hopefully I've proved today that I'm not. Italian embassy chef Danilo's dessert is a torta de plessi, a chocolate cake made without flour, with a vanilla panna cotta, a strawberry mousse, and strawberries and basil. It looks fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Chef. You know, it's not too fussy, but there's enough in there to really make you want to dive in and try this dessert. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. The cake tastes delicious. It's crunchy on the outside. It's moist. Monica's still eating it, so it must be good. Uh, it's good. I love the little nutty flavour going through it as well. It's a delicious cake. The panna cotta has got great texture. The strawberries on the plate and the strawberry cream and the basil. This dish works. It's been in good hands. You've done yourself proud. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Danilo, the cake is really good. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'm not going to say any more because I'm going to finish my cake. Do you know what the best thing about this dessert is? There's no Greg. He's not here. <laughs> we, don't just, uh, we don't need to share it with him. <laughs> no, we don't have to. I'm Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Delicious. Mm. Good job. Thanks. Top job. I'm feeling really, really great now. Yeah, yeah, good. Relieved? Oh, yeah. I'm feeling good. 34-year-old freelance chef Jason has made strawberry and Calvados jam with a light chocolate mousse, mascarpone vanilla cream, almond brittle, and fresh strawberries. First thing I want to ask you, Jason, is what has happened? What's happened is it totally went pear-shaped. The mousse did not set as I predicted it would set. Presentations, as I think we can all see, is not good. Yes, sir. One thing is very clear about this dessert, Jason. Pastry is not your thing. The strawberry gel underneath has just got far, far, far too much gelatin into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost rubber ball-like underneath. And the mousse itself isn't a mousse. It's not soft, it's not light. It's actually quite heavy and stodgy, to be really honest with you. And the caramel's not good either. Mm. Overall, it's not a great dessert, and it's certainly not been your best day in the kitchen. Yes, chef. Jason, this is just bad, bad execution. Pastry is very precise for the reason that if it isn't, this is what will happen. What happened is, I just looked away for a couple of seconds and this is pastry. It went wrong, like, I was like, oh. I'm not a pastry chef, so I went down in flames. <laughs> Sous chef Liam has made roasted and poached apple with a coffee and chocolate puree and a mascarpone Calvados cream. It's not a great looking dessert here, Liam. It looks very simple, possibly too simple from a chef like you. Lack of experience in pastry is very evident here, very, very clear. Mm. Liam, the best bit about this dish is the toffee. Uh, on the base of the plate. Uh, it's got a really nice flavour, it's got a nice smoothness to it, a texture. It is a very simple dessert. It's fresh, it's got texture, it's got the nuts, it's got the cream, but we're looking for the skill factor here. Roast me an apple. Don't put an apple in a water bath, blowtorch it and tell me it's roasted, because it's not. Okay. Mmm, Liam, I don't think this lives up to the expectations you set for us and I'm disappointed. Gutted. Now, they said it was just too simple. I could have pushed myself a lot more. I had a lot of time. I'm very disappointed in myself right now, I really am. Private chef Angela has made torched lime meringue on sweet short pastry, filled with roast apple, a cinnamon gel, an apple and vanilla gel and Calvados and Apple Mascarpone. It looks fantastic. I love the way you've piped it. And what's really nice is to see the beautiful green speckles of the lime coming through. If that were sitting in a cake shop, I'd think, I'd want to buy that. Thank you very much. I think it's a really good attempt, Angela, because to make a pastry with no recipe is never easy and you've cooked it well. What's missing here is a bigger bolder flavour of the apple 
uh, and a little bit of acid in there. It's all very, very sweet. But having said that, the meringue is incredibly light. You've coloured it and, and the lime zest has worked and it has a, a, a nice texture to it. The pastry is, is lovely and crumbly. I think you're a couple of minutes away from getting the base perfect. I do like the tart, but I'm just finding it, it's very sweet and there's bits of apple in there, but it's not as intense as I thought it would be. Okay. In hindsight, I wish that I'd made things a little bit more cohesive within the tart. You know, it's so hard to say whether one's done enough or not. Finally, it's Josh. He's made a deconstructed vanilla cheesecake with a basil-infused dehydrated olive oil cake, a raw strawberry salad with basil and black pepper, and meringue. The presentation's got really nice colours to it. It's very prettily put together. You've broken it down and you've dissected it up. I think the presentation's really nice. That meringue is lovely. Just how it looks and how it's made. You've got it spot on. I love the strawberries with the olive oil and bits of pepper through that. The cheesecake for me is so delicate and very light, very creamy. I think the way that you've made this dish, it's unexpected, but pleasantly so. You know what? I admire your bravery. The dish does work. It's intriguing and it's different. Good job. Well done. I like it. I'm over the moon. I got great remarks from the judges. It's me putting my heart and soul onto stuff. It's not just a case of being a bit, trying to be different. I am different. I didn't expect that at all. Chefs, you've certainly given Monica and I something to talk about. Marcus and I have got to decide which two of you have to leave us today. Off you go, guys. Well, what an interesting invention test. One of the chefs that stood out for me today was Danilo. I loved his panna cotta and that cake, I thought was a delight, a delightful dish. The strawberries, the strawberry cream, the basil, it all came together. It was superb. Josh is another chef I'm starting to take a great shine to. He challenges my mm. way of thinking about food and I love that. Very clever chef, very, very good dessert. Darren is another chef that stood out today and I really enjoyed his dessert. We both enjoyed mm. that dessert. The caramel chocolate mascarpone cream was divine. It's a dish I think I'll remember. Danilo, Darren and Josh. I think we both agree mm. these three chefs have got to go through. I think Monica, the chef that really crumbled today without a doubt was Jason. I think that really showed today in his dish. Yeah, it was an absolute disaster for Jason. Well, Marcus, that then leaves us with Angela and Liam. Liam, I felt, hadn't really challenged himself. A toffee sauce on the plate, some roasted apples that weren't roasted. There's a lot of skill in this chef, but today, Monica, maybe we've just uncovered his weakness, and that's pastry. Angela's dessert, the dish just needed the acid of the apple to sort of lift the mm. sweetness. Marcus, we've got two chefs and they both show a lot of potential here, but we've got to decide which one are we going to take through. I'd be pretty gutted if I went home today. I mean, I'm pleased that I got through to the quarterfinals, but gutted that I didn't make it through to the second half. I've got so much I want to show, and I want to be able to give that chance to just come back and absolutely attack it like I know I can. We tried some amazing desserts today. Delicious, in fact. But we can only take four of you through to the critics' round. And the first chef leaving the competition is... Jason. Thank you.
our second chef leaving the competition is Liam. I'm majorly frustrated I came here to go all the way but it wasn't to be. I messed up today on my dessert and that's why I'm going out now. I feel a bit gutted, but you know what? There was four marvellous dishes in there that I saw. It was my time to leave, so I'm leaving now, and I think you know I've achieved a lot. Congratulations! You're through to the critics. Well done. This is all about you now. This is your food. Cooking for the critics, not easy at all. It's an hour for your first four plates and then another 15 minutes for your dessert. Today is all about control, timing, attention to detail. You're going to be under a huge amount of pressure, but guys, you've got to get your heads down and deliver the goods. You have got to make this something special because at the end of it, one of you is leaving the competition. Off you go. One hour, 15 minutes is tough for any chef to deliver two dishes, four of each dish. Huge pressure, the critics and the time constraints. This is really going to test our chefs. I'm feeling good cooking for critics, you know, treating them as I would anyone else that comes into the restaurant where I work. It's not just being safe, I'm a bit out there today, playing on flavours, just making it a bit more fun with the elements that I've got going on and hopefully um, it'll be enough for me today to go through. Hey Josh, what are you going to be cooking today? A halibut dish yep. with warm tartare, clams, charred cucumber and heritage radish. It's a modern take on what I think is sort of being by the sea, getting your fresh catch in. I love fish, tartar sauce, salt and vinegar. So I'm going to play on those flavours and hopefully it'll get me there and get me through. And for dessert? I've got a lemon meringue pie souffle. Nice. Souffle. Risky. Yeah, um, I think it's got to be risky. You know, I'm not here just to be a number. I'm here to go on when the fire in my belly keeps burning. So right. I, I hopefully I'm doing something right. Is that fire in your belly uh, going to get you through to, to knockout week, do you think? Yeah. I yeah. want to be there. I want to be there. I like the sound of halibut roasted, fantastic. Salt and vinegar is making a gel from that, which I think is a really interesting idea. Josh's dessert. I like souffles, but only if it's got a bit of texture that comes to it. Bring into this pine custard. Something I've not had, and I can't wait to try. Chefs, you've had 20 minutes. I just love being a chef, I love the feeling of being a chef, it's just great, you know, it's like probably the closest job in the world to being a rock star without actually being a rock star. It's just a cool, a cool job. Hey Darren, how are you? I'm good, thank you. What's it feel like to finally be cooking for our critics? It's a, an equal mix of nerves and excitement, I think. Once I get going, I think I'll be fine, but I'm just a bit fingers and thumbs at the minute. What are you cooking for the critics today? So I'm doing a stuffed rabbit. I've got water bath it, and then I'm going to serve that with some braised lentils, a nice carrot puree, and a, hopefully a really powerful jus. And your dessert? Baked chocolate mousse uh, with a hazelnut praline and a hazelnut ice cream. Darren, you don't do service in your place of work, and today this is the closest you're going to get to a service. Well, yeah. How do you feel about that? I, I'm really excited yeah. about it, Marcus. Um, I don't, like you say, I don't get the opportunity no. very often, and I miss the buzz every day, uh, so it's a chance for me to get back to what I used to do, what I love and what I miss. Good man. This is it. You crack on, Darren. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really like the sound of Darren's menu. I love the fact he's using a wild rabbit. This is very, very difficult to get right. It's the cooking in the water bath and, and hopefully bringing out that fantastic, rich, gamey flavour. Darren is making us a baked chocolate mousse and then he's going to cool it down and then he's going to bring it back up to room temperature so it's lovely and soft. Can't wait to try it. Mm. Cooking for the critics, for me, I think is kind of a milestone in the competition. It's, you know, the people that go into restaurants 
and make or break restaurants essentially and make or break people's careers, which is terrifying. <laughs> Angela, here we are. What are you cooking? Black sea bass on a bit of braised fennel mm. with some fresh fennel and lightly, lightly pickled fennel, dill creme fraiche and a langoustine bisque. A lot to do. A lot to do. OK, and what about for dessert? Lemon meringue millefeuille, lemon verbena chantilly cream, lemon verbena sorbet, Italian meringue, some raspberries and some little mini lemon flavoured meringues. Wow. You've really got your work cut out for you here. I do quite a lot, yeah, yeah. Off you go. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank Good you luck. so much. Angela's main course is black sea bass. The key to the success of this dish is making sure the fish is beautifully cooked. The longer steam bisque, we're looking for big flavours. She's got a lot of other things going on the plate. She's got cucumbers, she's got fennel three ways. Angela's dessert is a lemon meringue milk boy. I'll tell you something, Monica, if she could pull this off, all these different flavours and all these techniques, we're going to be in for a really good treat today. I feel really excited to cook for the critics today. It's really simple. If I get this menu right, I have a chance to go to knockout week. If I don't, it's bye-bye. Danilo, how Hello. are you? A bit stressed out by the timing, but now I want it. Yeah, yeah. you've got a taste of it. Yes. What are you making for us today? A risotto with braised onion, uh, quail and summer truffle. I'm going for a rich taste. Ooh. I do love um, risotto with onion puree. Just make it more creamy and rich. Mm. And the summer truffle go perfect with quail. You don't want any other truffle with meat like quail. What about dessert? Chocolate ganache with saffron ice cream and salted caramel. So is this food that you cook for the ambassador? Yes, yes. Mm. This dessert I've been making for a couple of years now. He's really happy with it. Guests are really happy. OK, let's see. You Thank crack you. on. Danilo is making onion risotto. We want that rice just with a little bite at the back. If you can keep the cooking of that quail still pink, this will be great. I've never had saffron before with chocolate. Really intrigued by this combination of flavours. The key with saffron is the quantity. Too much saffron, and it can overpower the dish itself. Overall, Monica, you can feel it in the kitchen. There's a huge amount of tension. The pressure's on. There's a massive challenge of cooking for the critics and impressing them. But not only them, you and I too. The chefs who enter this competition, it's their life. And if they deliver great plates of food, then their lives can change. Chefs can go wrong by trying to follow fashion. It's, and we're always saying, give us something simple. I want to see strong flavors, clear ideas, and great cooking. We are looking for people who can combine originality with good technique. We'll just have to see. Josh, you've got 15 minutes before your main course is up. What's left to do, hon? Cook my fish, char my cucumber. It's all aluminium, my last bit, all so right. I'm going to get it ready. OK. Not keeping waiting. Josh is cooking fisherman's catch. I can almost hear the seagulls. I can see the ship coming into shore with his halibut, salt and vinegar, char cucumber, warm tartar, clams and peas. That sounds reasonable. I'm not sure about char cucumber. Slightly worries me. Josh. You've got just under five minutes. Gonna be there, chef. Ready? Yeah. Off you go. Good. Push himself. Yeah. Hi there. Today you've got what I call fisherman's catch. You've got halibut, clams, char cucumber, heritage radish, water sauce and peas with salt and vinegar. Thank you, hope you enjoy. Thanks. The overall look of the dish is, is relatively pleasant.
I can sort of see what Josh is going for with this dish. The overall impression is the flavour of fish and chips. And you're just disappointed that there isn't some lovely crisp beer batter and fantastic chips with it, because all these other trimmings are really adding nothing. The halibut, overcooked, tired. There's a reason people don't char cucumber. It's because it's completely pointless. It's just an effect that you don't need. I'm afraid, for me, Josh's dish doesn't work at all. As good as it looks, this dish is crying out for more sauce and seasoning. It's not come together. I hope there's going to be some salt and pepper on the table out there for the critics. Mm. All right, Josh, yeah. you've now got 15 minutes for your desserts are due. Josh's dessert is a lemon meringue souffle with pine. That could be quite nice if it works, if it rises. And then we're adding pine on it which could add a wonderful kind of alpine hue, or it could completely destroy it. How long will the souffles take? Nine minutes from now, Chef. Nine minutes? Yeah. Josh, this is looking lovely, OK? Thank you. Can you manage to? Yeah. Sorry to keep you waiting, just over a minute and a half. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. My dessert today is lemon meringue pie souffle with Douglas fir. Thank you. And is there pine in the dish other than in branch form? Within the um, anglaise that I've made, there's Douglas fir flavour for it. OK, thank you. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy it. I love the souffle. It's light, airy, lemony. I really like the sweet custard that goes onto it. And I love the lemon curd with the raspberries. I didn't get any lemon from the souffle at all. I got egg, quite rich, but incredibly bland. And then we got lemon curd with some raspberries, which is absolutely splendid. I'm not getting anything particularly pineish from the custard, but it's a decent little custard. Well, there's definitely some good stuff here. But it's just like he hasn't really made his mind up what the main part of the pudding is, so he's given us a little bit of everything, a kind of deconstructed lemon meringue pie. If he can find himself a decent plate, I'd be very happy to have it again. The souffle is just egg white with very light lemon coming through. The best bit about this, the, the, this dessert, Monica, is this. The meringue, the raspberries and the lemon curd. That is absolutely delicious. Oh, it's unbelievable how hard that was. Slightly over on my times, which I'm annoyed at, because practice, 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 and yeah, it's very hard. Darren, three minutes for your first course. I might be a couple of minutes late, just so I know I'm right. So Darren's main, stuffed rabbit with carrot and lentils and rabbit jus. Sounds all right, this one. If you can cook it so it's still tender, juicy, with a nice bit of jus. I love lentils. This could be fantastic. How's the rabbit? It's a little under, Chef. What do you do now? I'm going to have to pan fry it, Chef. How do you feel now? I feel a bit disappointed in myself, but I feel yeah. OK. Well, off you go. Hi there, I'm really sorry to keep you waiting. I apologise. Right. Thanks, Darren. Cool. So for you today, I've made a stuffed rabbit with braised lentils, carrots and a rabbit jus. What have you stuffed your rabbit with? The rabbit is stuffed with the leg meat, a little bit of pancetta, and the offal from the rabbit. Great, thank you. Well, I think the rabbit looks absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, the rabbit is overcooked. It's quite hard and quite tough. The carrots are basically raw, and the lentils 
aren't just al dente, they are massively undercooked and they're supposed to be soft and melting. It's such a shame because I really, I wanted to love this from the moment I read it to then when I saw it, but it misses the mark. I think this is very nice indeed. I like the carrots because I like my carrots crunchy. Undercooked. They're not cooked. They're, they're, they're just charred on the outside. I mean, they are they're, raw. They're really nice there. Are your lentils cooked? My lentils are fairly gritty, but that is the kind of nature of lentils. Um, I think, as usual, I'm the warm water between fire and ice because I kind of sit between the two of you. I don't think the lentils are undercooked. I don't think the carrots are undercooked. I think they are as they meant to be. But there are a few off notes for me as well. Carrot puree, slightly watery, but I think there's enough here to make me feel confident about Darren's cooking. The lentils for me could do with another couple of minutes more cooking. The jus, it's almost sort of a consomme uh, consistency. I really hope Darren can turn it around in his dessert course because he's going to need to. Darren, now got 15 minutes for your dessert. Yes, thank you. Darren moves on to a baked chocolate mousse with hazelnuts. Difficult to get right, because you want it to have that particular texture, but very, very good when it is good. You almost look like you're finished. You've got three minutes left to go. This looks a very different story to your main course. It's worked out in the end for, for the dessert, so I just need to quenelle my ice cream. I'm going to shred some roasted hazelnuts over the top, and I've got a hazelnut caramel syrup. Okay. Happy? Yes, chef. Much happier. <laughs> well, off you go. Right. Thank you. So I've made for you a baked chocolate mousse with hazelnuts. So it's a hazelnut ice cream and a hazelnut praline with a caramel syrup. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is a very competent looking pudding. Uh, it looks professional. The hazelnut ice cream, I love. I love the way there's a bit of salt to that twill. And the mousse may not be very moussey, but it's a really, really good blast of chocolate. It's a good pudding. It delivers an intense belt of chocolate when you need it. It would be far too rich and powerful were it not for the fact that it's tempered by this soft and delicious hazelnut ice cream. He has got a great palate, and when he cooks well, he does it perfectly. This is phenomenal. Mm. Once the sauce was poured on this, this, the dish came up to another level. The twill, lovely and thin and brittle. The ice cream was velvety, smooth, it tasted of hazelnuts. Oh, fantastic ice cream. To be honest with you, most things went to plan. It was just that it, the timing was tight. If the rabbit hadn't been undercooked, I would maybe been seven minutes over, but the time it took to get the rabbit back, it was like 15 minutes, it's just a nightmare. <laughs> Angela, you've got four minutes left for your main courses are due. Are we going to get there on time? No. How over do you think you're going Ten to Ten minutes. I think I need about 15 more minutes. 15 more minutes? You're going to have to really push this one, Angela. Now you're yep. going to step up the pace. Yeah. So Angela's main. Black bass, pickled braised and fresh fennel, cucumber, dill and langoustine bisque. There's a lot going on within the time available. This is one of those dishes where the chef's going to either be completely frazzled with pain, agony and stress, or she'll be very accomplished, it'll come and it'll work. How are you doing, Angela? You're out of time now. OK. Are, are you happy with how it's looking? I'm happy with the colour, I'm happy with how it feels, the doneness. I'm happy with it. Angela, we really need to get going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pushing it, pushing it, I promise. OK, all I have to do now is get the bisque into the glass things. You need to really start moving now. Yeah, this is it. Really, really start moving. 100% this is it. Or the restaurant's closed. Oh, OK. I'm good to go. You are 20 minutes late. OK. Put on one of those big smiles of yours when you yep. walk through yep. the door. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That was 
it off. Hi, I'm so sorry I'm late. There you go. Thank you. That's such a pleasure. I've made black sea bass on some braised fennel with some fresh fennel, pickled fennel, some dill pickled cucumber and dill creme fraiche. And then you have a langoustine bisque. Thank you. That's okay. That's light. Mm. Oh, are you kidding me? Mm. 20 minutes over, my fish is raw. Mm. The critics have got the same piece that we've got undercooked like that, they're gonna tear it to pieces. I think it's a very well cooked piece of fish. Tastes nice, got a bit of seasoning to it. Please, can I have a big bowl of the langoustine bisque? It's really nice. Could be a little bit more powerful, deeper and richer and stronger, but I suppose it's probably the right measure for this quite sensitive plate. I'm not entirely convinced by that dill cream. It doesn't fit for me with the rest of the dish, but it's a really, really nice dish. You've got 15 minutes left. Okay. And you have to serve your dessert on time. My dessert will be on time. You'll be in big trouble. Okay. Angela is doing a lemon meringue millefeuille with lemon verbena sorbet and chantilly. And there's a lot of technical stuff that has to be done there. She's got to make the sorbet, she's making the chantilly cream, she's making lemon meringue, she's making millefeuille. I think this dish is too complicated for its own good. Angela, you've got five minutes left. Thank you very much. Are we good? Are we on time? Um, my Italian meringue is just solidified. The, the, the sugar is just solidified in the bowl. It's not going to happen. So what are you going to do? I'm just going to apologise for the lack of meringue on my lemon meringue milk boy. Well, one minute, Angela. Okay. Off you go. Let's go. Not a problem. For your dessert, I've made lemon meringue millefeuille with lemon verbena sorbet and lemon verbena chantilly cream and raspberries. Please enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. A millefeuille is many layered, and this isn't many layered, it's three layered. Let's try a spoon on it. The sorbet, it's got a sort of syrupy taste. It's almost like a sort of melted scented candle, isn't it? It's, it's too fragrant and that is unbalancing everything else in the dish. The raspberries work quite well with the lemon glop at the bottom. It's a nice pudding. That's as far as it goes. This hasn't worked. The pastry at the bottom is way too tough. The sort of almost panna cotta base is a bit too gelatinous. It just leaves you disappointed. The twill, yes, they're nice, but a milfoy should be absolutely perfect on presentation. Everything cut to the right size, and it's all about presentation on this. This is not a great dessert, and I'm... Oh. You know, I, I probably actually just... I got so befuddled with the... Um, worrying about the timing that your brain almost goes into like slow-mo, like you're in mud or something, I don't know. Danilo, you've got four minutes left. Are you on time? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be on time. How's the risotto? Are you happy with it? Can be better, but... Don't say that. I'm always hard with myself, so... Danilo's main course, risotto with braised onion, quails and summer truffle. Every grain of rice has got to be absolutely perfect. It sounds great. If I saw this on a menu in a restaurant, I would order it without delay. So what's left to go on the plate now? The quail. Quail. And some sauce? Yes. I was planning to serve the sauce on the side. Perfect. Okay. Quail's on and we're good to go. Time is great. We have one chef. One. One. Out of four. <laughs> 
I'll take that. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Thank you. Thanks. So this is a braised onion risotto with quail and asparagus and summer truffle. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Enjoy. Thanks. Well, it looks rather pretty. I love the quail. The jus is sensational. But the risotto, it's just the wrong side of al dente. It's al crunchy. I love the risotto. I love the fact there's still a bit of crunch there. But it's absorbed the flavour of those braised onions magnificently. The asparagus al dente charred, absolutely delicious, so much flavour. And the quail, tender. Ah, oh, this dish is utter perfection. My heart goes out to the jus. Very good gravy. And the idea that you can have gravy with your risotto, I think, might have invented something new and wonderful. The risotto is delicious. The quail is beautifully cooked. The summer truffle works really well. This dish is excellent. Danilo has done himself proud. We now have very high expectations for Danilo's dessert. 15 minutes for your dessert. Are we going to be OK? Hope so, yes. Yeah? Thank you very much. Good, good, good. Off you go. Danilo's dessert. Chocolate ganache, saffron ice cream and salted caramel crowd pleaser with the little added nuance of saffron in the ice cream just to show us that he can bring in sort of rather more exotic ingredients. Pretty good stuff. Take your time, you don't have to rush it in a My couple no. of minutes. Thank you. That's it, let's go. Good job. Well job. Good lad. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So this uh, is a uh, chocolate ganache with salted caramel and saffron ice cream. And there's a little biscuit or something here? Yeah, it's a cocoa crumble. Thank you very much. Uh. Well, the main event looks great. Very chocolatey, deep, rich. Looking forward to eating that. I do find the saffron ice cream a bit incongruous. It is very overpowering. The smell is huge. The colour is terrifying. I'm not sure how it will match. Big tick for the chocolate ganache. Also for those candied walnuts, lovely. And I really like the way he's introduced salt into the cocoa crumb which just brings alive all the sweetness of the chocolate. Then you've got the saffron ice cream. We worried about the fact that the saffron was going to overpower the ice cream, and it does. I don't like it even on its own. But that aside, this is great. Sometimes less is more, and that's really rich, and just a bit of clotted cream would do me very well. Would I have preferred a different type of ice cream? Personally, I would. This is not to everyone's taste. Mm. You know, a lot of people will question this because yeah. of that saffron ice cream. Do I like it? Yes. <laughs> you know, mm. I don't feel like I shouldn't, but yes, I like it. That was really, really, really hard. Not everything will work out perfectly. I can tell you that I am like 65% happy, so... All in all, good enough. That was a tough day for our chefs. Pressure, frustration, things going wrong. Ooh, it was all in there today. Shall we start with the one chef who we both know did well, and that is Danilo. He was the one that stood out today for me, not just in the way he worked. His timing was impeccable, and of course, those dishes were great. The risotto was divine. His dessert was always going to divide people. Saffron ice cream, you're either going to like it or you really won't. 
But if that's all we've got to worry about, then I don't think we've got anything to worry about. I think he is, for me, the hot chef in the kitchen today. I absolutely agree with you on this. A Danilo has to go through. Yep. That leaves us with our remaining three chefs. We have Josh. The time caught up with him and he was just missing a few things on his fish dish. It was lacking seasoning and without a doubt more sauce. His dessert today, there was the pine custard and then there was that little side dish of the raspberries, the meringue and the lemon curd. It was absolutely delicious. Josh really wanted to push himself today and he did that. Darren looks like a chef that's just not quite used to the service. When it came to the main course, he was incredibly flustered and frustrated with himself, and that showed on the plate. He then came back with his dessert, and it was like a whole new chef. The star of this plate, without a doubt, was the ice cream. It was divine. Angela was also very late. The main course, I liked the presentation. It was a beautiful, elegant-looking dish. What really upsets me is a chef that's 20 minutes late yet the fish is raw. That milfoy should have been a stunning dessert. I just think there was just too many things going on with her that she couldn't cope with it. We have a really, really tough judging here. We just have to make sure we choose the right ones to go through. I hope I've done enough to stay in a competition. I'd be absolutely gutted to go home now. Hopefully they can see that I'm a risky person and I'm willing to push myself to the limit. That'll keep me in. I'm not feeling phenomenal, I can tell you that. I, I'd usually love to see and I just don't think I deserve it at this point. So I don't know. <sighs> not easy cooking for the critics, as I'm sure you all now realise. Marcus and I have made a decision and the chef that is leaving us is... Angela. Thank you very much. I'm feeling a bit emotional, but you know, it's, it's the right choice. I really hope that I can say with confidence that you did not see the best of my cooking today. I mean, I know you should be able to hold your nerve so that it does not affect what you do, but sometimes it does. And I think today it definitely did. Congratulations, you're through to knockout week. Massive relief. Air place knockout week is amazing. Just got to prove that I'm one of the better ones to keep and keep going and hopefully push on to the semis. I think I've had a bit of a reality check today. I probably thought I could come in and cruise it and it didn't quite work out like that, so I need to refocus for Knockout Week. Yeah, today was crazy. Yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great now. Yeah, and relieved. Next time, another six professionals fight for a place in the quarterfinals. Stop the lid. Stick the lid in. Oh, that one. <laughs> We've got issues here. I wasn't expecting a big kick-ass dish like that from you. <laughs>